Question 29 states that a car makes a 100 kilometer trip. It travels the first 50 kilometers at an average speed of 50 kilometers per hour. How fast must it travel the second 50 kilometers so that its average speed is 100 kilometers per hour? Okay, so we can start this question off by noticing um, we want to find V2. So if you know the average velocity we want is 100 kilometers per hour, so you know the average desirable is uh, 100 kilometers per hour. We need to use this equation to solve for V2. So we can say that, okay, well, an equation for V average is simply, you know, the total distance traveled over the total time. We're given D here, we're given that total distance. However, we don't have a, the total time it would take. So we can find an expression for that, and then we can substitute it back into here. So we know the total time it would take would be the time required for the first segment, which I'll call T1, plus the time it would require for the second segment. Using our relationship between distance, velocity, and time, we can simply organize, reorganize this as D1 over V1 as the time for one segment one, and D2 over V2. Um, dealing with multiple fractions is not the most convenient. So if I multiply both terms of the first term by V2 over V2 and V1 over V1 for the second term, this equation can be represented as a single fraction of V2 D1 plus V1 D2 over the common denominator of V1 V2. This made it a little more easy that I don't have to keep writing multiple fractions every time. Great, so now that I have an expression for, um, I have this expression, I can put it into my V average equation. So I'm gonna put this up here. V average equals D, which we know now, and we're dividing by T, so we can take the term we found here and invert it. So it'd be V1 over V2. Again, we invert it because we're dividing by T, not just multiplying by T, that's V2 d1 plus v1 d2. So we have this expression. Um, one thing we can use is that note that d1 equals, I mean, it's the same distance as d2 and is equal to the half of the total distance, right? The whole trip is 100 kilometers, d1 is half that. So I can replace my denominator here. So D, again, this remains the same, V1, V2, V2, D1, it's D over 2, plus again, V1 is also multiplied by D over 2. So that means our distance terms cancel out, and we can put a 2 in our, in our numerator here, bring this out, so it's 2 V1, V2, over V2 plus V1. And that whole term equals V average, of course. But again, I need to solve for V2 here. I know what V average is, so I need to do a little bit of algebra to rearrange this equation. So by V average, multiply that by the denominator on the right-hand side, V2 plus V1, and that equals 2V1 v2 and just a couple more steps here v average times v2 plus v average times v1 minus 2 v1 v2 equals zero i'm just doing this to give myself a little more make it very obvious what i'm writing out and I collect my V2 terms here, so I have V2. Oh, that's V average minus two times V1. Collecting all my uh, V2 terms. I can write on the opposite side of this, but that equals um, negative V average times V1 
which will come, the negative will come out in a second if I just do the following. V2, divide both sides by my bracket term on the left. That's V average times V1. And if I reorganize this denominator to be 2V1 minus V average, my negative sign on the numerator goes away. And now I have V average, I have V1, so I can solve for this. However, if I notice on my denominator, um, well, I create the top is 100 kilometers per hour times my velocity one is 50 kilometers per hour. However, if I do two times my initial velocity, which is 50, minus my average velocity, which is 100, note this expression here is zero. Therefore, if I divide one over zero, of course, I get the limit of it goes to infinity. So therefore, in, because this is what we're getting, V2 is not possible. There's no possible speed for the second velocity in order to satisfy this requirement for an average velocity of 100 kilometers. So V2 not possible would be appropriate. Not possible. As long as, again, you're describing that this denominator term does go to zero, which means your value for V2 would go to infinity.